morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us here for session two. I think I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, as my time has 11.10, and I want to make sure that we stay on schedule. Um, so again, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us here. Our second panel discussion of the day uh, will have panelists presenting on electric, medium, and heavy-duty commercial truck options. Uh, we have presentations from four different manufacturers, including Motive Power Systems, Lightning E-Motors, BYD, and Orange EV. My name is Jacob Beeman, coordinator for the Capital District Clean Communities Coalition in Albany, New York. And I will be moderating today's session with David Keith, uh, coordinator for the Greater Rochester's Clean Cities Coalition. Just want to remind everyone to an, uh, enter your questions into the uh, webinar control panel throughout the presentations, and we will be uh, finishing the session with about a 15 minute question and answer session uh, moderated by David. <clears throat> Our presentations uh, this morning will be from Joanna Hamblin, Senior Marketing Manager at Motive Power Systems, Tim Reeser, CEO and co-founder at Lightning E-Motors, Aaron Gilmore, Vice President of Electric Motors at BYD, and Kurt Newkins, President and CTO at Orange EV. Um, I do wanna uh, mention to all of our panelists, uh, we have a pretty tight agenda this morning. So um, if, if the presentations are cutting it close on time, I may send you a message in the chat pod, or if I think we're getting really behind, I may uh, cut in on the mic and, and you know, politely ask you to wrap it up. So uh, please don't think that I'm being rude. Uh, I'm just trying to make an attempt to uh, keep us all on schedule today. Uh, so with that, uh, Joanna from Motive, uh, if you can hear me, uh, we can start with your presentation and uh, just give me a heads up when to change to the next slide. Good morning. Thank you so much for the introduction. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Joanna Hamblin. Thank you for being here with me. I am delighted to speak with you today about Motive Power Systems. Next slide, please. The tipping point for vehicle electrification is here. The market is gaining momentum as fleets look to meet new regulations, reduce costs, and address social pressures for cleaner transportation. As an example, the California Advanced Clean Truck Rule that mandates 50% of trucks sold must be zero emissions by 2035 and 100% by 2045. Many other states have also followed suit. Motive is well positioned to provide fleets a pathway for electrification and get ahead of these regulations, but also demonstrate quantifiable business outcomes. Next slide, please. Motive was founded in 2009, and since 2013, we have deployed over 100 class four through six all electric vehicles. Based on the popular and first in this space Ford EQBM designation, Motive is now deploying its fifth generation technology. And that means that fleets can benefit from our mature and proven product. Motive is a US based company with final stage manufacturing by leading industry truck and body partners who run our Epic chassis down the same line as other vehicles in their production plans, ensuring that fleet customers benefit from high volumes and lower costs. With the same body options fleets are used to, the pathway to electrification becomes easier. Next slide, please. With the most boots on the ground field support and a team that has both a Detroit pedigree and Silicon Valley technology expertise, since its inception, Motive's mission has been to free fleets from fossil fuels. Motive is headquartered in the San Francisco Bay Area with an electronics plant across the Bay in Hayward, a pre-delivery and inspection center in Stockton, a chassis electrification facility in Indiana and Michigan, and a new application center to be opened near Detroit. 
Our proprietary Adapt EV software and patent power electronics work seamlessly between all vehicle applications and enable learnings from one fleet to easily become updates for all fleet customers via over-the-air updates. Next slide, please. Based on popular Ford models, Motive's Epic E450, F59, and F53 chassis give fleet customers access to the same platform they already use and love. Across class four through six, Motive's Epic chassis provides 127 kilowatt hour battery capacity and between 80 and 120 real world miles, depending on routes and terrain. This is an ideal setup for fleets with predictable routes and return to depot location. This isn't some niche technology, it's mainstream with plenty of real world examples of availability. I'll discuss a bit later. Next slide, please. The Epic E450 chassis is ideal for step band application. In this fifth generation design, please take a look, a, a closer look at the, uh, how the three BMW batteries are neatly packaged between the rails. Compared to previous designs, we have consolidated all power electronics and software controllers in the nose assembly. Among the many benefits of our new product offering, this ensures that any physical work or troubleshooting is an easy to access space. The fifth generation Epic F59 and E450 chassis have reduced the total number of components in the electric powertrain by 30% while also improving range, acceleration, and top speed. Next slide, please. Motive's approach has been to partner with top companies in each vehicle application segment, again, reducing the barrier of electrification for fleets. Some of our top partners include Utilimaster, Morgan Olson, Morgan Corp, Rockport, and many others that fleets are already working with today. Another benefit of working with these world-class partners is that they stand behind their product, providing fleets with a peace of mind. Next slide, please. In our recent deployments with Community Resource Project, their eight trucks show a wide breadth of vehicle applications available on the Epic E450 chassis, including box trucks, work trucks, and even a flatbed. Notice the custom lift gates we installed that make docking a snap. For USPS, which I'll talk about more a bit later in the case study section, uh, they chose to partner, uh, uh, they chose to, uh, popular step band applications uh, for their delivery vehicles. Uh, on this slide, I've also included some of the more important specs, such as battery technology, charging consideration, wheelbase options, and other standard features. Next slide, please. Our Epic F59 chassis is ideal for step band applications. Bimbo Bakeries, who recently placed a follow up order, Alsco, who yesterday announced a new deployment with us, and Aramark, one of our longest customers, all utilize the Epic F59 step band for their product deliveries. What's consistent across both chassis is the overwhelmingly positive driver feedback we're receiving. In addition to quiet, pollution-free ride, operators are noticing less back pain and fatigue due to regenerative braking with single pedal driving. Next step, please. Or slide, excuse me. <laughs> Thanks. Fleets partner with Motive for three important reasons. One, we're OEM approved. Ford EQVM approval means a lot to customers, knowing that Ford is standing behind the chassis. Final stage manufacturing takes place in high volume production plants. Two, we source commercially proven batteries with billions of real world miles of experience. This only means documented uh, reliability, but also ensures that some of the costliest components of their vehicles are backed by OEM warranties which provides fleets with assurance they need. And three, Motive provides high-touch, 
pre and post sales customer support. We help customers with charging infrastructure, including coordination with utilities and third parties, grant and incentive supports, and driver and training to ensure post deployment success. Next, I'll share three customer case studies. Next slide, please. Aramark has been working with Motive since 2017 when they deployed 10 step bands built on the Epic F59 chassis. 21 additional step bands were deployed between 2018 and 2019 across four depots, and 50 additional vehicles are planned for 2021. With over 3,444,000 ,000 miles and 98% uptime, Aramark is offsetting 446 metric tons of CO2 cumulatively and 2,186 metric tons of CO2 for the additional trucks per annum. Next slide, please. Also utilizing the popular Epic F59 chassis, but with less battery capacity due to their lighter payload requirements, Bimbo started with five vehicles in 2019 and have 23 trucks currently in production. They also have 100 additional vehicles planned for 2021 deployment. Motive worked closely with Bimbo from the inception of this project, evaluating facility power, conducting route analysis to confirm an EV fit. Right size uh, charging uh, with scalable approach towards the future uh, Bimbo is currently enjoying 100% uptime and 22 metric tons of CO2 savings that will reach over 3,000 metric tons with the additional 128 trucks they plan to deploy. Next slide, please. Perhaps one of Motive's most rigorous acceptance tests was designed by USPS engineers and included gradeability, hill hold, acceleration, and range tests in various scenarios. USPS is also enjoying a high 99% uptime. Fleet reliability metrics that only Motive is publishing, thanks to our years of experience with fleet customers. USPS's seven step bands have accrued over 34,000 miles with an offset of 34 metric tons of CO2. Next slide, please. For fleets who are here with us on this webinar considering electrification, I wanted to end with the seven key considerations for going electric. Motive has been working with fleet customers for many years now and has helped them address all sorts of challenges. So the below are learnings from all those deployments. No matter which EV manufacturer you go with, these are key considerations you want to keep in mind. Number one, review routes and usage patterns. Things like hill gradients, highway versus city driving, parking locations, and more are important here. Not every scenario is going to be a perfect fit for EVs. Work with someone who can assess your situation and provide honest feedback. Two, range. What to believe versus expect. Kilowatt hour per mile is usually a good metric. What is your basis for comparison? Real world miles work best. Three, commercial EV fit. Review available funding and conduct total cost of ownership analysis to account for operational and maintenance savings. Paybacks becomes quicker if you have the right partner guiding you through the maze of funding options and guidelines. On average, motive fleets save up to 85% on OEM costs. Four, charging infrastructure. If utility involvement is needed, start early. Right size, chargers with a scalable view towards the future. Ask your EV manufacturer to show proof of prior projects to see what kind of scenarios they have expertise with. Motive provides full support for fleet customers, including all third-party coordination. Five, operators. Formal driver training needed at deployment is easier, plus a refresher every one to three months after deployment. Having local support will help you address any issues, especially with some of those early deployments. 
six, robust support plan. Ask the EV manufacturer to provide dedicated local support, not dealer or third party. This also includes understanding product warranties ahead of any vehicle purchase. And lastly, number seven, monitor vehicle performance and driver feedback weekly in the first month and adapt as appropriate. Ask for a weekly or monthly uptime report to gauge performance. Lastly, I wanted to share a quick video with feedback from real fleet operators. Thanks so much for queuing that up. Smoothness, quiet, uh, good regenerative braking. It rode really good. Acceleration felt good. Um, smooth, quiet. Braking on the uphill was really, really nice. So it didn't roll back because that's always a concern that I think I have and a lot of people probably would have. It's very impressive. I, you know, I'm, I'm ready to move forward with it. I do. I like the concept. Thank you so much, Jacob. Uh, for those on the webinar, if you have any more questions or would like to uh, reach out to me, uh, please go to our website at motiveps.com. Thank you again. Great, thank you, Joanna. And again, for all of our attendees, if you do have any questions right now for Joanna, feel free to enter them into the question pod and uh, we can address them at the end of uh, session two. Uh, 
up next, we have our presentation uh, from Tim Reeser from Lightning eMotors. Uh, Tim, are you on? I am. Good. Good morning, everyone. Is ever can you hear me? I can hear you great, Tim. So uh, you can go ahead and just let me know uh, when to switch slides. All right. Let's go to the next one. And I think we uh, start with a video here. If you can play that. Lightning E-Motors specializes in commercial electric vehicles, from medium-duty vans all the way up to motor coaches. You'll see in our factory lots of customized vehicles, like shuttle buses with wheelchair lifts, like large Class 6 delivery trucks with refrigerators or with custom lifts on the back. Our ability to deliver a very wide variety of technologies, order sizes, configurations and customizations in a very cost-effective manner to our customers makes us highly unique and specialized in this space. What you see in our factory is flexible lines both to build the powertrains and to assemble the electric vehicles. Our flexible lines allow us to adapt quickly to a wide variety of orders and a large quantity of orders as they come in. Not only is this facility the largest commercial electric vehicle production facility in the United States today, it also has capacity to continue to expand at a very fast rate. Sitting on a campus with over a million square feet today and an incredible labor pool in northern Colorado, we are committed to expanding at the fast pace that this market wants to take us. Lightning E-Motors is the product leader today with more medium duty commercial electric vehicles on the road than any other OEM. This product leadership is not just a function of volume, but also a function of product quality and product features. We lead today and we're committed to leading going forward. All right, thank you. Let's go to the next slide here and we'll run fairly quickly through this. Um, I think most of you, I, I, obviously on the presentations this morning, we've had a lot of discussions about the problem we're trying to solve. And I think we're all very, very familiar with it. But I think just to restate it, commercial vehicles uh, represent a significant amount of, of human health challenge around diesel uh, air particulates as well as gasoline air particulates. Um, we have a real opportunity together to make an impact on air quality, make an impact on livelihood uh, quality and health quality broadly, as well as uh, climate change as well. So next slide. What Lightning's doing from an electrification standpoint, the same as what you've heard from Motive and we'll hear from others, um, we all, but as we drive electrification, there are four key benefits we look at. One of them, rather than starting with climate change, is the, the one I like to talk about the most and that you heard in the, the motive presentation as well, is dramatic noise reduction. I think it's important to note this isn't just from being inside the vehicle, which is a big deal if you're a passenger on these vehicles where before you couldn't talk on your phone, you couldn't even read your phone, now you can. So I think those are, when you're thinking about being a shuttle bus uh, passenger, that's a big deal. Uh, but also outside, when you think about the cities and the amount of noise in the cities, uh, and you hear those those uh, vehicles drive by with their engines. Uh, I was sitting in a restaurant the other day, or outside a restaurant before they closed them all down, and uh, in comes the delivery vehicle for the restaurant. Where I was trying to have a conversation, and that conversation had to shut down for about five minutes while the, the truck rattled along and, and did its duty. So to not have that anymore, we believe is a very compelling uh, proposition for electrification. Obviously, air quality and human health that I talked about earlier and climate change are, are there. But I think the other one that many people don't think about is the control and optionality around energy and resiliency. So the opportunity to think about uh, how do I run the buckets on my bucket truck, the opportunity to think about how do I run the refrigeration systems on my refrigerator truck, 
or the uh, electrical systems on my ambulance or my RV because I now have all this battery power. I may no longer need things like propane on board or or uh, have to sit and, and stay plugged in in order to run the uh, various uh, accessories on an ambulance, for example. So these are all important things and reasons to think about electrification beyond just the sustainability parts of what we're doing. Next slide. So what Lightning does is manufacture complete vehicles, uh, class three to seven electric buses and trucks. Uh, we offer both battery electric and fuel cell electric variants. We offer them as a, as a full vehicle um, where the chassis is done. We can do that, uh, perform that uh, electrification either before or after the body upfits are done. We also sell powertrains to strategic partners. So for example, in New York, we have a strategic partner who uh, provides uh, powertrains for buses and coaches and provides buses and coaches. We provide them an upfit repowered uh, electric powertrain for those coaches and buses. So uh, sometimes it's new vehicles, sometimes it's uh, uh, vehicles that are repowered options. In addition to what we do on the vehicles, uh, we provide a full suite of analytics that are catered to electric vehicles. These can plug into the telematics and analytics you already use. What we're doing is taking one second data from all these vehicles, uh, uploading it to our cloud and uh, doing all the analytics on it to provide our customers full reporting. This can be uh, real time, it can be a daily, weekly, monthly, a lot of times in the early days, uh, we do daily reports. And uh, what you see us talk about is how to leverage that data actionably. So I think it's important when you think about the, the climate in New York and the differences in that climate. I think everybody on the call probably understands and knows that climate has a big impact on a battery electric vehicle range. And so by having these analytics, we're able to tell you real time as well as weekly and monthly how that vehicle's performing in the cold or in the heat how much of your energy is going towards things like running the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, or how much uh, battery power you might be using under a full payload today versus a partial payload in the future. And that allows you to scale up and think about what you really need in this vehicle as you scale in terms of battery power. One of the points I like to make is uh, because we have modular battery options in all these vehicles, uh, you have the option of right-sizing that battery. And the, the important part of that is if you oversize the battery in these vehicles uh, in any vehicle any electric vehicle you lose payload um, and you also spend a lot more money uh, a lot of people haven't thought about it but it's about a thousand dollars per mile of, of uh, range in, a, in an electric commercial uh, vehicle from anybody today uh, around that part so if you think about uh, if you design these vehicles for 200 miles instead of 100 miles, you're going to spend an extra $100,000 on that vehicle battery. So it really makes sense to right size the, the uh, batteries. And because of our telematics and analytics, we're able to do that uh, in a very accurate way for you. In addition, we provide the full suite of charging solutions, uh, not only in terms of helping you get it installed, helping you work with the various programs that we heard about earlier on this on these presentations, uh, but also about taking advantage of what we hope New York does in the future with low carbon fuel system credits, obviously the renewable energy credits that are out there, uh, but just as importantly, making sure we right size charging just like we need to right size the vehicle battery systems. And the two of those go hand in hand because obviously it's a function of not only how much range and what energy you're going to be using for the day, and also making sure we have enough to account for the cold summer months and the hot, uh, the, the, the hot summer months and the cold winter months, um, but also enough to account for big payload days, whether that's you know full passenger days or whether that's uh, full cargo days. We wanna make sure we account for all of that. Uh, pull into that the how much of that uh, time, dwell time do you have to charge the vehicle? And that will then specify what kind of charger do you need, whether it's a, a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger or whether it's a six kilowatt uh, level two charger. All of those are options and we need to make sure we plan correctly. And many of our fleets use all of the above because different vehicles obviously have different needs. Uh, one note, Lightning also provides, you see the little picture below there with the van. We have a, a trailer and a van option that is a mobile charging solution. So for those larger fleets uh, that need uh, to, to, for example, fast charge your vehicles at a parking lot, 
or need to be able to rescue vehicles, uh, we have that uh, proprietary solution today where you can buy a mobile charging solution that scales at different needs from us. Finally, we provide a full suite of financing. Uh, so customers can look to us. We provide, for example, a very common solution is a seven-year lease with a 10% uh, residual buyout. Um, we guarantee residuals, so we enable this kind of financing to make it easy for our customers um, to, to get creative around what they need and innovative around what they need in terms of financing and wrap all of this together in a very effective and cost-effective way to make it happen. Next slide. One of the things I like to point out about our specialty is we uh, really focus on the unique and segmented aspects of this business, meaning we have an, an offer today and are selling today and have customers uh, you know, running uh, a class three Ford Transit-based ambulance from us. Um, and a lot of people think that's easy, that they can just buy an, an OEM uh, electric ambulance, but they don't exist. We're the only people today who put uh, electric ambulances on the road in the United States. Um, and it's an exciting application, but it's not simple in the sense that you can't just throw it on a skateboard or throw it on, you know, the eventual uh, class two Ford Transit that Ford announced a couple of weeks ago. It's a highly specialized vehicle with a lot of things going on underneath it and a lot of electrification needs that we support uh, in a very unique way from Lightning. But as you walk around this circle and you think about shuttle buses and you think about bucket trucks and refrigerated delivery trucks, uh, and coaches and transit buses, we provide powertrains and electrification for all of that uh, through a uh, very proprietary and highly modular, mod modular software and hardware solution. So different size batteries, different motors and transmissions, um, different uh, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, but in the end, it all looks the same to you. Our software is the same. The user interface looks very similar on all, on all of these vehicles from us making it easy for your, your drivers and your passengers to support, and your fleet managers to support the vehicle. Next slide. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but I think it's very important to note that uh, batteries are not uh, one size fits all. And, and from a quality standpoint, it's very important to uh, look at what you need from batteries. And so a few key things we do, the first one is uh, we're using very high quality cells uh, from the, the, the traditional people you'd see, LG, Samsung, uh, that are, are obviously make great cells. But the second thing is those cells have to be wrapped in a highly safe environment that can handle commercial vehicles, and they have to be uh, thermally managed very carefully. And I think we all know from New York, um, you know, it's not California. You have very cold winters and, and hot summers and humidity and, and all those things that can certainly degrade a battery very quickly. So it's absolutely critical in order to get a highly efficient battery and a battery that's going to last a long time that you have it uh, thermally managed, being liquid cooled um, and uh, very carefully managed through the BMS system to keep it within a, a couple degrees Celsius and make sure it works very well. So next slide. We do uh, a significant amount of our work, both our, our transits, our, our Ford transit based products today and our E450s are compliant with Buy American. Next slide. Now, a little bit of the fun slide, you can see what we support. Uh, this grows uh, monthly right now. We had new platforms. In fact, we'll announce shortly uh, new platforms on the Class 6 variety with both Kino and with uh, GM Navistar. So uh, this is growing regularly. On the motor coach and transit bus repowers, uh, we support uh, three or four different uh, OEM buses in each of those repower categories as well. So a very significant case uh, that I think is very important to look at in terms of what we're doing. Uh, next slide. I'm gonna dive a bit into a couple of these that I think you may be interested just to kind of make the point. Um, many people have asked us about when Ford announced their class two uh, transit, and I'll show you a table in a minute about some of the differences between us and Ford. It's important to note we don't compete. Uh, we are QVM, uh, 40 EQVM also, uh, as Motive said, there's just three of us that are. And that's a very import, important certification that means Ford carries the warranty uh, on their part of the products. It means they audit us uh, and make sure we are compliant with uh, doing uh, handling this in a very high quality fashion for these vehicles. So uh, with that, what you see from these vehicles is a, a best in class, class three van. Again, these are threes. You see the dually wheels on these versus the Ford uh, product that they announced for two years from now that is a a uh, class two or a class one. 
Um, but many of the same things you'd see in some of what surprises people, we now have range options from 140 to 250 miles, much higher than you see from others. And one of the challenges in this space is a lot of people advertise miles with no real backing to it, or range with no real backing. When we talk about range, these are CARB Dyno certified. And today uh, in this class three space where uh, the California Resource Board requires Dyno certification, and by the way, so does NYSERDA, and so in, in terms of leveraging the CARB certification, and so that uh, CARB certification, we are the highest efficiency dyno rated product uh, in their history and that is currently on there today. And what that means is this product gets 66 miles per gallon equivalent, and you compare that to a, uh, a, the gasoline version that gets about 13, you can see with that efficiency why these vehicles are so much less expensive to operate. So next slide. <clears throat> A little bit of comparison, and again, we'll leave this up, but I think it's important to note uh, it is not direct, our product is not directly competitive with Ford's. Ford's, most importantly, is a class two, and Ford does not offer passenger vans. So I think those are the two most obvious uh, check marks that Lightning has that are different from Ford, uh, but you will notice things like different payload capacity um, with our modular battery options, a lot more battery option, as well as a fuel cell option and thus higher range and a, a very similar starting price. So uh, next slide. It, important to note while we were on there, all these vehicles are uh, also on the NYSERDA certified list as well. Uh, so the, the NYSERDA grants apply where appropriate. Um, the class three is not uh, under the, the Volkswagen Emissions Mitigation Trust Fund. You have to go class four and above. Um, so as we go into something like this class six, it is on the NYSERDA list. Um, this is a low cap forward. Again, we offer a battery electric version of this for a Hino that, and a GM Navistar. So if you want something different than the Isuzu and GM product, uh, which this one is, uh, we have all everything you could ask for. Uh, range options, again, because you, we can put different battery options on this, you can go from 88 miles to 130. And again, these are real world miles with real payload tested by real customers. Uh, with telematics and analytics uh, reports showing you, uh, you know, how it's doing on a second by second and a uh, state of charge meter in the vehicle that's showing exactly how you're doing. Uh, we do use standard CCS1 combo with DC fast charge on all these, so you can charge them with any variety of standard chargers that uh, are out there today and also with our, our energy solutions as well. Next slide. So as we think about one other product we're very very proud of, and this is a product actually, we have a lot of these uh, just started shipping these into New York uh, two weeks ago. So you'll start to see some E450 box trucks like the one below running with uh, a major name you all will recognize shortly. Uh, by the way, also with the transit van, uh, we've started shipping them into New York. We'll have uh, about 80 vehicles in New York by the end of Q1 of both the E450 and the Ford Transit van variety with uh, two major names you'll recognize. So I can't announce them just yet, but those orders are actually being produced in our factory or have already been produced in many cases and already shipped out to New York. Uh, so we're excited to have a very significant footprint in New York, which means we have, you, you know, already have the service network set up. And obviously for spare parts, um, we, we support, I think it's important to note on all these vehicles, uh, we support multiple shuttle bus varieties from different brands uh, because we have a modular approach. We can support different shuttle bus bodies and brands. Um, but with that, uh, we support all of their spare part networks, uh, you know, Ford spare part networks. If you need uh, mirrors, if you need uh, ball joints, all of that comes directly from the, the current supply you already use and the current service partners you already use in terms of of those things and then we uh, leverage local service providers that we have trained up uh, in New York to handle the actual day-to-day uh, -day service of these vehicles. Next slide. One of the things that we're excited about is the total cost of ownership. Uh, we've really seen this uh, change in the last three months and that's why we all of a sudden have uh, 1,500 orders for new vehicles in the last three months and that's because the the economics pencil out now as, as our volumes have increased, our prices have come down dramatically. And with those lower prices now, you now see that whether you use the NYSERDA grants that you have in the middle of the page there, or even without NYSERDA grants now, uh, you can save significant money 
on most of our platforms. So what we show in this page, and I realize it's a lot to show, is uh, we take the vehicle and provide a lease. As you can see there, that it is a, a significantly more expensive vehicle than the gasoline. But what you see is it is significantly 83% less expensive to operate. So uh, although it is more expensive, you get a much cheaper operation and therefore uh, the vehicle pays for itself. And in fact, it saves you significant money every month. Next slide. A few things to note, we also have a 550 truck and bus offering today. Uh, the only uh, F550 shuttle bus offer uh, you'll see running down the road. Um, we really like this particular, I like this particular platform because it's so big and smooth, a lot of fun to run on. Uh, next slide. Uh, also, as, as you've seen earlier from others, a, a F59 option as well. Um, we do have that option all the way up to 160 kilowatt hours of batteries. So about 130 to 140 real, real world miles uh, range in what we're going. And, and with some of our new technology, we'll probably announce by Q2 uh, a, a fuel cell version of that too, that'll get you up to 300 miles on that vehicle. Next slide. One of the things we like everybody to think about is this idea of repower. And so when we think about transit buses, many of the drivers and passengers love uh, their current platform, they have spare parts, they have spare fenders, they have spare body panels if they get a little fender bender. Um, they know how to maintain these vehicles. So the optionality that the next time that thing comes in for a diesel repower, instead of putting a diesel in it, you put a lightning electric on it, uh, is very compelling both from a cost standpoint um, and from a, a availability time standpoint. Um, these vehicles are available uh, within six months of order rather than waiting the current two-year lead time from some other players in the market. Uh, so we're very excited to have this unique offering and happy to talk to anybody. We offer this repower offering on all of our powertrains, but we find uh, the most interesting uh, ones we get from customer feedback today are transit buses, um, sh campus shuttles, campus buses, and campus coaches. Next slide. Uh, you kind of see here the compelling aspect of it when we think about time with both delivery time and we think about price uh, very compelling to look at look at repower um, this orange bus you see is one we have on the road in boulder colorado so it's running in cold climates hot climates it works well this was a 2004 model gillig so an old bus they were going to send it to the scrapyard uh, we saved it from the scrapyard electrified it gave it an extra 12 years life uh, a great story from a sustainability and from a cost and effectiveness standpoint Next slide. I want to spend just a moment talking about analytics and telematics. This gives you an example of a report from us. You can get this report uh, hourly, daily, monthly, weekly from us. You can see the amount of data, the trend data, how the vehicle's doing. You can also see in the bottom, it's hard to see there, but an exact pie chart of where all your battery energy is going. Uh, we know how much is going to air conditioning. We know how much is going to, murder, uh, to the, the motor. Um, we know how much is going to your other accessories. So I think those are real world ways in which we can help you understand how to scale this vehicle um, and make sure we get the right amount of battery power in it as you, you buy more vehicles. <clears throat> Next slide. Slide 20 just shows a picture of, of uh, what we're doing on charging. You can see DC fast chargers and level twos. This is actually at our campus, uh, but we've got a lot, of, a lot of customers who rely on us to uh, do the charging solution for them soup to nuts. And again, we'll leverage all of the, as National Grid talked about earlier, their programs and other people's program to make sure you have what you need and take advantage of all of the uh, subsidies that are in place. So one of the things about charging from us, next slide, is obviously uh, if you need support on anything of the vehicle or the charging, as we say, you have one throat to choke. Uh, we've got a 24 by seven uh, NOC network operations center uh, where our team responds immediately to uh, any kind of charging or vehicle issues, uh, dispatches to the team we have in New York and make sure you're taken care of. Uh, a little bit, I spoke earlier next slide about uh, mobile and fast charging. This gives you a picture of what that looks like today. Um, again, something happy to talk about separately. So I think I'm running close to over time. I uh, wanted to uh, make sure that, that other folks have room for, for discussions and time. So with that, I'll, I'll uh, leave it to the next, next presenter. Okay, great, Tim. Um, but you do have a little bit more time if you felt that you were skipping something, but I'm 
happy to to keep moving if if that's all you've got and we'll have uh, plenty of time for questions then okay let's let's do that I'd, I'd love to have people engaged on the question side so we'll just leave more time for questions perfect <clears throat> thanks tim Okay, next up we have Aaron Gilmore, Vice President of Electric Trucks for BYD North America. Hi everyone. Yeah, Aaron Gilmore, Vice President of the BYD North America Electric Trucks Division. Happy to be here. Um, just uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Just to start off really quick, give you a few quick uh, facts about BYD for those of you not familiar. We have over 250,000 employees globally. We're located on five different continents and have 30 plus industrial campuses at this point in countries all over the world. Um, we have a, uh, a manufacturing facility in the US in Lancaster, California that now spans over 550,000 square feet uh, and supplies over 750 union jobs. And we've essentially been either number one or number two in both passenger vehicles and commercial vehicles now for the last six years, including, uh, and this, this is electric vehicles, of course, uh, for the last six years, including 2020. Next slide. Next slide, please. Thanks. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of all the different businesses that we're involved in, uh, of course, the entire ecosystem of BYD is electric, uh, electric vehicles, batteries, um, solar modules, and, and, uh, and energy storage. So it, it's an all sustainable type of ecosystem. The business divisions consist of the commercial vehicles division, which includes electric forklifts, electric buses, and the electric truck division, which I'm a part of. Um, and then we also have electric passenger vehicles, uh, a longstanding consumer electronics division that sells various products to lots of names that, that everyone would know, the Dells of the world. Um, and uh, and batteries, battery storage. Uh, it's important to note that, that we started our history in batteries and was a battery company before uh, moving into these other areas. And then we also have a sky shuttle, sky rail type monorail uh, business division as well, as well that you will see much more of in the near future. Next slide. Going to where we are across the world, um, we are essentially an international company providing these electric vehicles uh, across the world. I think what's sort of interesting to know is that a lot of the world is ahead of North America in terms of adoption of electric vehicles at this point. Um, most of our business actually is in Asia, uh, probably second most in Europe at this point, uh, even Latin America, and South America has been adopting uh, electric commercial vehicles at a very high rate as of lately. And only recently, we really started to see that, that real pickup in North America that we're involved in. And we're really starting to scale our business operations in North America to be able to handle the upcoming demand that's coming. Next slide, please. We are an ISO 9001 certified manufacturing uh, facility in Lancaster, California. Again, we, uh, we build many of our products there from, uh, from the ground up, essentially. And it's important to note that, that of course, as a company, we uh, have done essentially nothing but electric vehicles. So we're not uh, a diesel uh, company that is now trying to figure out how to best fit an electric drivetrain, batteries, electric motors, et cetera, into the vehicle. They're designed from the ground up to be electric vehicles. It's the only experience that BYD has. Next slide, please. Just going back to uh, our uh, manufacturing, again, we have 
more than 750 union manufacturing jobs. We're, we're proud to be partnered with SMART Local 105, which is the sheet metal, air, rail, and transportation union across the US. And we've been highly engaged with them to uh, work on training programs, apprenticeship type programs that fuel this, this new economy of manufacturing jobs in this growing space of vehicle electrification. Next slide. I think just heading back to uh, our initial core competencies, again, BYD was founded in 1995, actually as a battery company. Uh, so back in uh, the late 90s, if you had one of those Nokia cell phones, it probably had a BYD battery inside. Uh, since then, over the last 25 years, BYD has been involved in all sorts of battery chemistries and has a deep expertise, um, ha has essentially been either number one or two in the world in batteries and battery output out of our manufacturing facilities for, for many years now. Uh, for trucks and truck applications, we've chosen to focus on an iron phosphate battery chemistry because they're the safest in the industry. They essentially, the chemistry itself cannot go into a, uh, a thermal runaway type situation, even if it's you know, lit on fire, so to speak. Uh, so for the application of heavy duty trucks um, and the deep cycling that takes place, the, the hard heavy duty work, uh, the way fleets like to run these trucks, you know, this is the right battery application for that. Of course, uh, I think as Tim mentioned, you know, the, the thermal battery management system is, is super important. Um, and we've certainly tested our batteries and they've been actually delivering in a wide variety of applications and temperatures across the uh, continent. Next slide, please. These are some of the tests that we go through on, on batteries. Uh, and that it ranges from you know, setting batteries on fire to puncturing them with nails, impact testing, crushing testing, uh, all sorts of testing to try and short circuit the battery and cause it to have an issue. And the BYD batteries have been proven to remain stable in, in even the most extreme conditions that we can come up with. Next slide, please. And you can go ahead and go to the next slide. That slide's highlighting. A... Sorry. No, I was going to, I think there's a bit of a delay, so. No problem. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. And this one uh, just basically states that we have over 13,000 uh, commercial heavy duty trucks that have been delivered uh, to date globally. So that goes with, in, in buses, I know it's over 60,000 at this point. Um, by far, BYD has the most heavy duty commercial vehicles in the electrification space that are delivered to date. The markets that we're focused on in North America are, uh, are these that you see on the screen right now. Terminal operations, um, so class eight heavy duty yard trucks to move containers around ports or warehouse distribution facilities. Uh, we're in the refuse collection space. Uh, we have both class six and class eight refuse trucks. We fit those with a number of, uh, of different bodies from different bodybuilders around the country. So if you're a municipality and you like a particular bodybuilder, um, we take our cab chassis, bring it to that bodybuilder and they can, they can fit it as a pure electric. Um, both terminal operations and refuse collection will be covered in some more detail by my colleague, John Guerra, who will be speaking uh, later. So you know, stay tuned for that in the next session. He can go into some more detail on some of the applications there, some of the experiences that we've had. Um, and so stay tuned for that. Uh, the other space that we're focused on is distribution and logistics. And we have both class eight uh, tractors involved in that as well as class six uh, box trucks or cab chassis that can be fit with a number of, uh, of boxes or refrigerator boxes and other types of applications. Next slide, please. I'm 
just to dig into the uh, BYD ATT, which is our tandem axle day cab. Uh, it's a class eight tractor. It's a it's got a gross weight capacity of 105,000 pounds. We talk about a range of 125 plus miles uh, as a safe working range. This is actually the second generation of these trucks that we have. We're actually working on the third generation right now, which should be available in late 2021. Uh, so these these trucks have been on the road for a while and uh, and been proving themselves and. We talk about it as a safe working range because there's all kinds of different conditions that somebody can drive a truck. And if they're driving a diesel truck, you run out of gas, you just pull over to the, the next gas station and you fill up. But today, in today's world, there's not, it's not that convenient for electric charging. So it has to be planned out, of course. And we want to make sure that we're providing, even though this truck can drive over 200 miles in given conditions, if it's fully loaded, if it's dealing with, uh, you know, grades, maybe more grades one direction than another. Um, if it's dealing with a particularly cold day where the, uh, the driver has to heat the cab the entire time, all those conditions are built in and, and we still want you to come back with a 20 to 30% state of charge at the end of your duty cycle so that you know that this truck is gonna perform. Next slide, please. The other truck I was going to highlight and the slide will come up here shortly is our class six. Um, it's a cab chassis that we fit with uh, a box and or refrigeration box, or as I mentioned, a refuse uh, body. We can do a number of different configurations with that. And it also has a 125 plus safe working range mile, uh, uh, safe working range, and is in the second generation. We're working on the third generation right now. Uh, next slide, please. Just to go into uh, a couple of case studies real quick uh, and to show you like, these are not sort of experimental vehicles. Um, this Durkee Drage truck is actually our Gen 1 uh, Class 6 box truck. It's actually been on the road since uh, 2017 and performing really well. Um, a lot of urban stop and go delivery routes and, uh, you know, runs the entire day, goes about 100 miles on the particular route that, that we've seen and, uh, and returns with greater than a 20% state of charge. So really has been a, a good truck over the years and, and given us a lot of insight into our later models. Next slide, please. And I think the, uh, the other case study I wanted to just highlight is GSC Logistics. Um, they've got three of our trucks running out of the Port of Oakland right now. Um, it's actually a route that takes, uh, takes you from the Port of Oakland all the way inland over a significant grade and back. Uh, to the Stockton area. It's probably 135 miles or so of, again, highway and, and hills, and it's hauling shipping containers from the port. And it, it's, it's doing that, uh, that route and returning home with a 20% state of charge. So it's been a great, uh, great application to show that drayage is a good application for, uh, for these trucks. And with that, I'd like to uh, go to a video from here, if we could cue that up. Uh, it's a video with one of our uh, great customers. Uh, it's AB InBev, Anheuser-Busch, show you some information about their experience with some of our trucks.
Great, thank you. Um, yeah, Anheuser-Busch has, has been a great partner for us. They mentioned 21 trucks in that project. Uh, we put four more into service in, uh, in the Northern California, Oakland area. And they're certainly looking at various areas across the country, including the East Coast, to, uh, to deploy these trucks. And they're very happy with them, as you heard from uh, Carlos, their, their driver there. Um, a lot of comments that he made are very common that we hear across the board. Uh, the drivers love the, uh, the lack of noise, the lack of vibration, the lack of diesel smell, um, the torque and the pickup in the, in the truck, uh, et cetera. Just a really pleasant experience. And I think uh, a lot of drivers around the country are, are just going to say, you know, we really don't want to go back to driving diesel trucks after driving these electric trucks. So really excited about the future. You can go to the next slide. And that's uh, pretty much what I had today. Again, uh, John Guerra, my colleague, uh, Senior Director of Business Development, will be talking in a little more detail about some of the trucks that I didn't go into detail on. So the, uh, um, the refuse trucks, both Class 6 and Class 8, and our Class uh, 8 uh, uh, terminal yard trucks as well. So thank you. I'll turn it over to the uh, next speaker. Thanks, Aaron. Uh Appreciate the information. Looking forward to hearing more uh, from John in our next session. Uh, next up, uh, we have a presentation from Kurt Newkins, President and CTO of Orange EV. Hello, everybody. Ahead, Kurt. And thank you very, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, letting me uh, join and present about Orange EV. Uh, we're very excited to be here. We've been building all electric terminal trucks uh, in production since 2015. The company started a little before that and I'll get into that a little bit. We're really proud of, as others are, about having 100% electric trucks. They're safer, they have faster stopping distances, they're more reliable <clears throat> and they're lower cost. And the drivers and the management both like the advantages. Next, please. Let me just do a little overview of the benefits of the truck and you know why fleets are choosing our trucks. It's to reduce their downtime, avoid costly problems with diesel and diesel emission controls, increase safety, as I mentioned, and improve the driver experience. And that cost discussion is really important. Our trucks dramatically reduce the total cost of ownership. And I'll get into a little bit more. Uh, we save up to $60,000 per truck annually on fuel maintenance and emission controls. Now that I say up to 60,000, I want to be transparent. That's for a three shift 24 seven operation. And we can support that without any problem. We have multiple customers running three shift uh, 24 seven uh, operations. Uh, if you're going to two shift operation, it'd be closer to $40,000 in savings a year or up to, and then a single shift up to 20,000. And that up to really depends on how hard you're running the truck. So you're going 25 miles an hour, or you're doing 15 miles an hour. Are you, uh, you know, doing 150 uh, moves a shift, or are you doing 45 moves a shift? So those things are significant in the discussion. If you use more diesel, you'll save more money. Uh, so we're saving up to 90% on fuel. We're saving up to 75% on maintenance and repair. And we're saving, of course, 100% on the emission control uh, equipment. And then when you add the soft savings of health benefits, the safety, the operational benefits, the uh, driver retention, the reduction in fuel on your, on your lot, or having to go off-site to get fuel, all those types of things, those benefits add up also. But we don't count those in our uh, in our 60,000. Those are additional soft savings we call them. We're, we're trying to talk about just the hard savings in the up to $60,000 per year. And then of course you're completely eliminating the diesel rated cost and emissions. Uh, next. So a little bit about us. We, we are a bootstrap company. We, were, we started here in the Kansas City, Missouri area founded back in 2012. We've grown significantly since then. Uh, we've gone through a, a couple of moves into larger spaces. 
So we've gone from our original 2,000 square feet uh, where we built our first trucks, kind of that garage uh, mentality to 12,000 square feet. And now we're over 50,000 square feet. And really you can see in the bottom right picture there, a true assembly line straight through the, the shop, uh, multiple pa you know, in and out. And so uh, really have a capacity that's well beyond anything, uh, any other electric vehicle system that we're aware of out there. Um, and, and able to really match any customer, any, any customer needs. I, I should say it that way. Uh, I think others probably have some capacity too. So, uh, but we have a uh, capacity to meet our customers' requests. Uh, over uh, 230 trucks in service. That's a little while ago, I guess the slider, I think we're over 250 now and uh, you know, significant revenue growth. Our customers who are bought trucks are rebuying trucks. Um, and I, I'll say too, we are, are working on autonomous discussions. Uh, we have a partner there and uh, multiple partners actually. And so the autonomous part of this is something we've been working on for several years now. And we think we'll be one of the first players in that market with our trucks and our partners. Next. So lots of you uh, know what a terminal truck is. You know, we are talking about terminal trucks in this in this category because it is a class eight truck. They're called hostlers, they're called spotters, they're called yard dogs. They move a semi-trailer around a shipping yard and in and out of the docks, around rail yards, and of course, uh, um, distribution centers, manufacturing, all that, all those areas use our trucks. We can pull up to 81,000 pounds, which is standard, up to 25 miles an hour, which is standard for the diesel uh, yard hostler. Again, I mentioned we have the 24 seven operations. We use in the different areas, the rail, the manufacturing, distribution, agriculture, uh, waste. Uh, we have both on-road and off-road compliant uh, trucks. And, you know, these trucks, most of our customers think about them in hours, not miles, but uh, we have telematics that can track both of those. Next, please. You can see in the slide, not only do we have the four by two model, which was our first model, we were been producing, as I said, since 2015, but we also have the six by two, which we've delivered now into the Chicago market. Of course, we've got no diesel engine, but one of the things that makes the orange EV truck special is we also have no transmission. So there's no worry about that failing or a maintenance to the transmission. There's no cooling, uh, there's air cooling, but there's no radiator, there's no coolant. There's no uh, possibility of spillage there or leakage or all those types of issues. Uh, and there's, of course, the no emissions controls. We can operate up to 24 hours on a single charge at some of our customers, but we also have other customers who work the trucks much harder. And so we have the fast charging. And I'll get that into that a little bit later, but we can support 24 seven operation. We have telematics uh, providing real time operating data. This can help. We've looked up by the customer themselves. We also do reports of that uh, for our customers to help them understand their savings and the, the benefit and also how they can use the trucks better. So uh, that telematic system is on every truck. We are industry first on that in that terminal truck market. And uh, we see real benefit from that from our customers, not only in how they run their operations, but also in how we together uh, service and manage their trucks. So for instance, automatic reminders on uh, maintenance every 500 hours, that type of thing. Uh, texting when the tire pressure is low so that you can fill the tire instead of having it fail or uh, get it fixed correctly right away before uh, if it's not noticed. Of course, the trucks are safer, cooler, smoother, quieter, and cleaner. So that's, that's, uh, that just goes along with electric. Uh, but also when you don't have a transmission, that makes the truck a lot smoother. One of the concerns in this market, because all the, the forward and reverse, a lot of the customers, you know that you go through transmissions and you have axle problems because the, the driver hasn't may, maybe gone all the way to zero speed before they switch directions. That's not an issue with our truck because there is no transmission. 
And so you can be hitting that uh, reverse switch where you're going five miles an hour and it doesn't hurt anything. It slows down and starts going the other way. It does the regen braking and takes off the other direction. So no problem for this powertrain whatsoever. Uh, definitely a, a much lower total cost of ownership without any incentives. We, we see that, uh, but uh, with the incentives, we can see, you know, many of our customers see immediate payback. Uh, without the incentives, we're seeing payback in one and a half, uh, two and a half to three and a half years many times. Uh, we have full regenerative braking. It's on the accelerator pedal for our trucks, which makes it a single pedal driving, if you will. And that has been uh, a hit with all our customers. And that's, that's really the, the, the reason why you get the 50% reduced reductions in stopping distance. The reaction time you would normally need to take your foot from an accelerator pedal to, to the brake pedal goes away. And so you immediately start slowing up. And of course, as we all, all love, love to know, these are zero emission vehicles. Uh, next, please. So some of the trucks, uh, as you can see, we you know, pictured here, we do custom paint jobs. We do, uh, we have different battery configurations. So we have an 80 kilowatt hour pack or 160 kilowatt hour pack. And we do that to match the customer need. When we get uh, with our customers, when someone contacts us, we definitely make sure we go out and understand their operations, understand their needs and configure a truck that fits their needs, but doesn't cost any more than it needs to. So if someone has a single shift operation, they don't need more than the 80 kilowatt hour pack. And that allows them to, uh, us to reduce the price to them and for their payback to be better and quicker, even though they're only uh, using it one shift, uh, it still makes sense financially. We also do a, uh, an all new truck from the ground up. You know, we start with a frame and just go from there. Uh, and it's truly, it's not a glider, it's, it's us building our own trucks. We also do a reman. So we can take your existing trucks and uh, remanufacture those. And that can save uh, the significant savings there because we're not putting all the new parts in. Now, even in that truck, we're only reusing the, the cab, the frame, the fifth wheel boom, and the front axle, the brand new rear axle, uh, all the all the hydraulics are new, all the pneumatics are new, all the electrical is new, you know, all the way to the uh, to the headliner is new, you know. So we redo that truck. Uh, we actually sandblast the cab and the frame before we repaint it or galvanize the frame, if you'd like that, and then build it up uh, from the ground up uh, down our normal line with all new parts. So it's truly a remanufactured vehicle, and it comes out looking brand new. Uh, several of the trucks in these pictures are actually remanufactured trucks, and uh, I don't think anybody could pick them apart. So uh, we have different charging capabilities, the uh, 13, 22, and 70 kilowatt hour charging are available. And again, those are matched to the needs of the customer, the, the eight hour shift, the 16 hour shift, or the, the 24 seven operation. We do that again to, to minimize costs for our customers and that cost of that charging station, if you need less, it also changes your infrastructure costs. So we're very con conscious of making sure that we're making uh, propositions for our customers where they become more profitable because they're using our trucks. Do we have uh, some improvements to these trucks uh, over what's been seen in the industry? One of those things is gator hide flooring and high wear surfaces that just creates a whole different durability of the truck. We know uh, from our reman uh, business that one of the weak spots of these trucks in the past has been floors that rust out. And so we made sure that wouldn't happen with a powertrain like ours that has gonna have so much longer life than the diesel counterparts and the transmissions. We wanted to make sure that the truck lasted along with the, with the powertrain. As I mentioned, we offer a galvanized frame as an option. That's a fully dipped frame talked about earlier about the four by two and the six by twos. I mentioned the custom colors that you see here. We have 12 volt uh, options inside the cab for you know radios and uh, or, or uh, cell phones and such. And then air conditioning uh, with a three-year warranty, which is something I don't think has been seen in the industry before. 
and instant on electric heaters. And so that air conditioning system is all self-contained. Again, we don't need a radiator or anything. It's all within that unit. So it makes it very uh, nice. We're just providing it with electricity and everything else uh, comes together within the unit and uh, you have that three year warranty there. So it's really nice AC system. Let's uh, next slide, please. So we're pretty proud of the fact that we've been around for some years, uh, you know, and de delivering, you know, production vehicles since 2015. If you see the, the dark orange states, we've got trucks running in all those states. You might notice that we've got trucks running in Minnesota. We've been through winters in Minnesota. We've got trucks running in San Antonio. We've got, uh, for the heat, we've got trucks running in Buffalo, New York. We've been there for multiple years and uh, through the snow. We've been in Chicago cold weather for over five years, five winters. We've been in California uh, and there's been some very hot days in different areas in California. The high desert gets pretty warm. Uh, and so we've seen all the way from 130 uh, or 20 F down to uh, minus 35 F um, and had no problems uh, handling those temperature ranges. Uh, and we do service all our own vehicles. So we have local to the truck service teams who are mobile. We find that to be uh, very well received by our customers and a, 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 an upgrade to what they've seen in service in the past. If they have an issue, they call us, uh, or if we have to do maintenance, we go to their site, we do that, and they're back up and running within a couple hours. Uh, so you can see some of our customers here. That's just a small uh, portion of our customers. We have over 80 fleets using our trucks already and, uh, and some, some very big names. Um, we have uh, surpassed, our commercially deployed fleet has surpassed 665,000 hours and over 2.1 million miles. And that, remember that's 2.1 million miles at three miles an hour average, because that's what these trucks do. They stop and they go and they, get out and they open trailer doors and all that kind of stuff. So at three miles an hour, we're, we've gone over 2 million miles and that's customer use miles. We have trucks that are running over 560 uh, hours a month. So those of you who know terminal trucks, you know what that means. Uh, and then again, mention the factory direct, we come to you service. That's a uh, next slide, please. So let's talk about some stuff we've done in New York because the New York state and team has been very uh, uh, very supportive of, of the Orange EV trucks and our customers. And you know, this is a press release from Dimension Fabricators who's in, in New York, happy and safe operators stick with your, you for the long term. And the guys just love the new Orange EV truck. They can't stop raving about it. Uh, you know, just one of our customers, I think we've got over I think we're around 20 trucks in New York. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that there's, that's more coming. There's 11 trucks commercially deployed in New York uh, uh, right now. We'll be at 20 soon. Um, the uh, uh, multiple trucks operating through their, their fourth winter in New York. Uh, and we have trucks in New York at rail intermodal, uh, DCs, manufacturing, waste transfer, and uh, in some multiple different cities there. Um, right now, the New York uh, VIP voucher amounts are uh, 140,000 for our extended duty. That's 160 kilowatt hour pack and 108,000 for the standard duty. That's our 80 kilowatt hour pack. So some very good, uh, we appreciate those incentives and it helps customers who haven't tried electric to realize how much better it is than diesel and realize that they can save a lot of money even without those incentives, but for sure it makes sense with the incentives. Next slide, please. So these are a couple of customer cases uh, that we wanna go through. This one, first one is Kraft Heinz. They've deployed uh, some trucks in Ohio. Uh, they did that through their 3PL Firefly, who is a spectacular company. If someone's looking for a 3PL, uh, go ahead and uh, go to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. 
So Firefly, who's the 3PL, will operate three orange EV pure electric terminal trucks to do the work formally accomplished by five diesels. With this deployment, Kraft Heinz plans to virtually eliminate diesel terminal truck commissions at their Groveport distribution center. So this is a press release back in 2019. As you can see, uh, uh, they're very happy and they were able to improve their efficiency. Now, I won't, I won't say that our trucks uh, will do that at every site. I think a lot of this has to do with Firefly. Firefly has, uh, is very aggressive about being uh, fully utilized with their vehicles. One of the things I will say is that they feel comfortable doing that with our vehicles and our service uh, model because they don't feel they have as much downtime. And so they feel like they can uh, have less backup. Uh, everyone who's in this industry knows that you have backup diesels and multiple backup diesels if you have any trucks at all. And so this is part of, part of why they've been able to uh, achieve this reduction. On to the next slide. Ability Trimodal, this is out in California, and they're supporting the ports in California. And so let's uh, go to the next slide, please. We've got five trucks there, and their quote in their press release was, for the last 12 years or more, we've had two to, or three diesels down at any one time. We need a solution until Warren GV, no one had the answers. So they've got five of our trucks, they, they love them, and they've been running them hard and we appreciate them as a customer and we appreciate their perspective on, on our trucks. Next slide. This is OMSS. This is in Oakland. You know, the uh, Ability Trimodal is more down in the LA area. And uh, this is also supporting the port of Oakland. Uh, you know, I wanna make sure it understands we, we are limited to 81,000 pounds at this point. We can go over that a little bit for specific applications, but we're not a 180,000 pound truck uh, um, at this time. We see ourselves uh, bringing that out in the, in the near future, but we haven't an, announced a, a timing on that. So um, uh, Oakland Maritime Support uh, Services is just outside the Port of Oakland. If we go on to the next slide, please. The yard hustle is critical to our operations, so we naturally wanted to go with the industry leader, that's Orange EV. They specialize in electric hustlers and it shows. And this is a very small operation compared to some of the other ones we've talked about. And you know, their livelihood is these trucks. If if they go down or if they aren't working, it changes their, you know, it changes their bottom line significantly. So uh, having said that, uh, they've been very, very happy customers. Next slide, please. Dependable uh, supply chain services has also bought some of our trucks and they're limiting emissions uh, um, and concerned about their worker safety and their site personnel and their uh, uh, California location. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So uh, for DHL, the company has deployed several diesel alternatives, in, uh, including compressed gas and hydrogen. The only thing that makes sense is electric. And so uh, after using our trucks, they realized the difference there. So let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, Big E is another one of our customers. And uh, Big E is in the Bay Area and they, uh, really move the trucks around to different sites to use, to move their cranes and things around. So what they really like about the truck is that they can uh, uh, send it out to a location, run it, and then uh, come back and, uh, you know, it, it works the whole day away or several days and they don't have to worry about it getting charged up, uh, you know, and being away from the charger. So on to the next slide. Their, their comments were, we're getting a full 12 hours of work per charge, which keeps our orange EV trucks running all day long. The trucks are quiet, efficient, and very reliable. So again, they're, they're happy that they don't have to worry about charging the trucks during their operations. Next slide. So this is a, a special case. Bolthouse Farms did their own study internally, actually without our knowledge, 
where they uh, looked at our truck. Uh, we bought two of our trucks back in 2017. So this is a while ago now and uh, ran the trucks for two years. They also bought a diesel at the same time and compared the diesel to the, to the Orange V electric yard hustlers from 2017 vintage. And let's go to the next slide. This is a press release they gave and uh, was uh, we weren't even part of. Uh, we didn't know what was coming out. They had done some stuff with the state of California to help other uh, companies understand the benefits or the concerns with electric vehicles. And they had uh, you know uh, shared their experience with our trucks. So their quote is, the Orange EV electric terminal tractors had a 75% decrease in downtime over the two year period as compared to their diesel counterparts. The diesel vehicles needed about 522 hours in the shop, while the electric vehicles needed only 134 hours. There was an 80% reduction in maintenance costs compared to the diesel counterparts. The diesel vehicles cost 393 per hour to maintain, and the orange EV vehicles cost just 78 cents per hour to maintain. So significant difference there, 75 to 80% reduction in maintenance discussions, and that's over and top, over and above their fuel savings. So Again, we're very proud of that. We want the industry to understand how much, how much better the trucks are than diesels and that we stand behind the trucks. Next, uh, next slide, please. So that, that's really my presentation here. And uh, you know, I think we're, we're uh, several of the uh, 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 presenters were a little earlier than, than uh, expected. I don't know if I went fast or not also, but uh, um, see the, the name down there, Sky is our national sales director. Love to take your call. It's skyc at orangev.com. We have uh, sales team members across the country. So you'll have your own local salesperson uh, to help you. And uh, you also have your own local service people to help you wherever you are. And we're very excited to work with anybody who's interested. Uh, we've got team members up in, in New York and the area. And uh, like I said, we've got lots of trucks up there already. So um, I guess with that, I'll turn it back to our moderators and uh, you know, answer some questions. That's great. Thank you, Kurt. And uh, thank you to all of our presenters. Um, we're now gonna move into our question and answer portion. Um, I expect that we have quite a few questions uh, lined up in the queue. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes here until 12.55. So uh, David, if you want to uh, start getting into the questions, um, go ahead. I, I don't have access to uh, our question pod, so. I do, uh, yeah. Uh, panel, great job, it was very, very interesting. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, there are some that are to all, so I'm going to save those till the end because some of you uh, have been identified as the one they want to answer. So I'm, I'll go through those first. Um, first question came in uh, during Johanna's pre presentation. Uh, it might be more of a generic question, but the question was, would be good to know cost benefit guidance on slow versus quick fill for EVs. How is this decision made? Um, I assume that ties to the level of charging. So Joanna, do you want to answer that one? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, so certainly, so the level of charging depends on uh, the type of vehicle uh, that is uh, utilized and also the type of uh, charging uh, infrastructure that uh, the fleet decides to go with as well, uh, as well as uh, the type of uh, power that they have coming into the facilities. So there's lots of different considerations. Also, the types of routes that the fleet uh, goes with is also a consideration. Okay, Swell, thank you so much. Okay, um, this one's for Tim. Uh, first one for Tim, it's uh, uh, for 46,000 for the e-transit. What's the price without grants? Um, so it depends a lot on, and obviously this is true with all of us, and even when you see something from Ford, for example, saying $46,000, it's not only a function of grants, it's also a function of options and which vehicle you take. So uh, for our standpoint, uh, typically, you'll see uh, pricing somewhere in the $50,000 range for uh, the upgrade from a gasoline. In other words, the difference between what a base 
Ford Transit might be, for example, uh, versus what the full electric would be. Again, it's it's also a function of how much uh, battery capacity, meaning range, uh, that somebody wants. It's also a function when you look at these vehicles, for example, Ford Transit has a different base cost as a passenger vehicle, a cargo, or a cab chassis. Um, a cab chassis being the cheapest before you put a, a chassis on, or before you put a, a body on the back or a box or whatever you're gonna put on the back or a school bus body, um, but being obviously the most expensive post that. So, uh, so sorry to be a bit uh, a bit nebulous, but what we tell people, and, and I see this across the industry, and I've read a lot of articles, even when you look at Europe and South America, you'll see a price point of about between two times and three times the initial price point for a vehicle, uh, for an electric vehicle versus a gasoline or diesel. So still a pretty expensive premium. That's coming down for all of us. And so I'll just kind of speak for everybody on the phone. Uh, we know as volumes increase, as sales volumes increase, those our costs are all coming down and the supply chain is getting more mature. Um, but uh, certainly, as you look at from a total cost of ownership, even today, where we are all today with costs, for most of us, have you seen, as you've seen in all the presentations, there is a, a return on investment proposition, even without grants, even with that higher number, because, and, and I thought uh, Kurt's presentation was great with those, you know, very dramatic savings, and we see the same thing, uh, typically about an 85% reduction in operating costs. So. Uh, we don't want people to get get scared about that upfront cost. It is, I tell everybody, for a long time to come, batteries will be more expensive than an aluminum fuel tank, and that's just life. Uh, but what is also life is that the operating costs are so dramatically less for these vehicles um, that it makes sense. So. Uh, from our standpoint, as long as you finance it in an appropriate way over a period of time, especially because financing money is so inexpensive for everyone at the moment, um, all of us have a pretty compelling proposition around uh, total cost of ownership every month and saving you money every month, even with uh, a two to three X, you know, front end higher cost. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, another quick one for you, Tim. Uh, do you offer four wheel drive? Uh, yes, yes, on most of the vehicles. Uh, because of where we integrate and engage, and we're generally running the exact same, uh, you know, front front to rear prop shaft, a vehicle that also has a takeoff uh, for four wheel drive uh, fits right in. So uh, obviously there's some specifics, and and in a broader sense, you know, Ford makes a four wheel drive option for the Transit, for example, as does some third parties. Um, so there's certainly a discussion to be had, but in a, at a high level, yes. Okay, thanks. Uh Aaron, uh, for the iron phosphate batteries, even though they don't have typical thermal runaway like other traditional batteries, is a BMS still included in addition to the thermal management system? Very technical. <laughs> That's for Aaron. Yes. Yeah, there there is. Um, I guess there's 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 no way of uh, of, of saying that differently. Um, the other thing I'd address is uh, maybe to the charging question as well that like Joanna was was asked uh, one of the ways we've addressed that is uh, is to have all our trucks with both uh, a lower power AC charging and a higher power DC uh, fast charge so each truck has a port for uh, a 40 kilowatt AC charger or a 100 up to 120 kilowatts DC fast charge so it can kind of deal with different fleets that have different work cycles you can spend a lot less money if you just have to go with ac and, and 40 kilowatts is fast enough to charge the the trucks or if you've got a work cycle that's really intense and you need to to charge under short periods of time then uh, you have the ability to go with a dc fast charge okay thank you this one is for aaron uh aaron what is the price of the class six uh and uh let's see there's an asterisk there are trucks you showed without grants i guess maybe that would be that would be kind of redundant because you already kind of talked about the variables and the uh, apples to oranges and all that stuff so uh, unless you want to say more um maybe we'll just go by that one uh, yeah i mean i think i think uh you know tim tim answered it somewhat the way i would have to as well it's an it depends sort of yeah. answer um, I think in general, uh, the trucks are in that two to three times the expense of uh, of a brand new diesel truck. Um, 
but the operation savings is really where it's at. So if you're going to finance the vehicle, you're going to if you're going to include operation savings, then it, it comes into a, a completely different type of equation. And of course, volume and location timing, all those things are important as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, this one is for uh, Tim. Uh, what are the warranties on the batteries and the drivetrain systems? Uh, so we do a uh, basically match the warranty of the uh, particular uh, chassis we're using. So if it happens to be a Ford uh, chassis, those are typically five years, 60,000 miles. Um, obviously, and you, you know, you can read it publicly if you look at, for example, the various state contracts we're on uh, or buyer contracts we're on. A lot of times, uh, those do uh, require an increase to a 100,000 mile warranty. So uh, there is a little bit of dependence, both uh, publicly, but the standard that's listed is five years, 60,000 miles, unless you're on a state contract or other that that requires something like a 100,000 mile, in which we comply to that as well. Okay, thanks. Let's see, there was a question about for examples, case studies for refuse vehicles, but that's been deferred to the next section because we're we'll be dealing with those, so we're not gonna answer that in this session because it uh, isn't in the medium duty space. Um, let's see, Kurt, uh, can your trucks charge off my existing ABB branded CC at S1 DC fast charger? Uh, not at this time. Uh, no, we use our own chargers at this time. Uh, one of the reasons we do that is because we've been a little bit contrary to the industry. We use 125 volt max in our vehicles. So our high voltage doesn't go over 125 volts. Our, our, our operating voltage for lights and stuff is still 12 volts. We do that on purpose. Uh, it gives us a, a safer product. So if someone does work on the product or if there's an accident and there's a, a, any kind of issue, now we do, we have monitoring of the voltage just like everybody else does. We've got finger safe connections just like everybody else does. We do all the industry discussions, but our system runs at 125 volts. Unfortunately, CCS1, uh, J, uh, the SAE requirements do not go down to our voltage. So some of those, some of those suppliers do, and we're working with some of them. And so we think we'll be able to do a, a unit that goes as low as our uh, voltage and yet manages the other trucks. So we're working on that. But at this point in time, we have dedicated uh, chargers. Now, most of the time uh, you want that dedication on our trucks uh, because they're behind the fence and they're in the commercial lot. And so you wanna make sure that truck is getting charged when it needs to. So. Mm -hmm. That's the right answer right now, uh, but because we're at lower voltage, uh, the standard wasn't written to to match our needs. Although, as I was saying, some of the some of the suppliers uh, did that anyway, and so uh, we might have an opportunity to do that. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, Tim, this is a technical question. Uh, in addition to the SOC and the BMS, is SOH included in the analytics? Uh, yes. English. <laughs> okay. Yes. So what, what you'll see and in, in, from our reporting analytics, it is customizable. So most of our fleet customers, you know, do often request something, uh, you know, slightly modified, um, ranging from can we integrate with another uh, telematics OEM, which we do, uh, to, uh, you know, specifics that we're looking at with each kind of different vehicle. And so the, we are able to customize those reports for customers. Um, but as, as a general rule, yes. Uh, so we really care, as everybody can imagine, about um, uh, idle time as well and other aspects. So yes. OK, thank you. All right, uh, I want to get through uh, some of these questions that apply to all because I think they're relevant. We have two different questions related to cold weather. You know, we're in New York State, and uh, you know what it's like here. So uh, I think it's a relevant question. Uh, we also got some from some of the upper Midwesterners. Uh, so real world experience in cold weather climates like New York, as an effective vehicle range, uh, use of cabin heat, et cetera. And then uh, uh, another question related to that, what kind of range have you seen in cold weather in New York and Michigan? Uh, March temperatures are below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it's 30 here today. So <laughs> we, we get a lot colder than that. So uh, 
whoever wants to t uh, speak to that. Uh, Kurt, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll take that on. Uh, we've been in cold weather uh, winters uh, for five, five years, five plus years. This will be our sixth year, uh, even into Minnesota and Minneapolis and uh, some of, the, of Michigan and all over uh, New York. Uh, the, the cold weather does drain a little bit more on the batteries. There's some you know, heating actually takes more than air conditioning. And so it does take a little bit extra. Uh, we, you know, we have, and I'm sure the others can tell you a lot of the same thing. We match our battery size for that. So when we go understand our customers' needs, there's a, there's a bigger variation in their needs for how hard they use the truck than there is in their needs for uh, subs or handling that heat need. So, uh, so there's no problem really. And, uh, you know, you're talking about under 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. We're handling minus 30 Fahrenheit without without problem in, in Minnesota. And the customers that we've, the first customer we sent a truck to there and de uh, delivered a truck there has uh, called us up and saying they want more. So uh, it's working, so. Okay, thanks. Any, uh, yes, go ahead, Tim. Yes, so I'd, I'd add to that, uh, to put some specifics on it, there is a, a very specific difference between something with a big cabin and a small cabin for all of us. So, uh, you know, when we think, and I realize this is a, a truck discussion, but if you think about a motor coach where you have, uh, which we do quite a bit of, um, it, you have a very large cabin to heat um, and you're heating it with, you know, a battery electric uh, power, obviously, you have a significant more drain on the battery system than a small cabin and say a low cap forward truck. So, it's important to note that any stat any of us tell you is even different. And I know probably quite a few people on the on the phone drive an electric vehicle, an electric car, as do I. And in my electric car and my Tesla, I see in Colorado on a, a zero degree Fahrenheit day, I'll see a 30% drop in range. But part of that is I've got a big cabin and a Model X to heat. Um, it's not a small car. And part of it is the physics of batteries do require you to, to heat the batteries and uh, run the batteries at temperature. And so both of those end up with, uh, you know, we see as much as a, in a very, very cold day, like uh, Kurt was talking about there, you could see a 30% degradation on a, on a vehicle that has a lot of cabin heat requirements. Uh, on a uh, vehicle with very little cabin heat requirements, uh, you, you could see a less. So the other thing to think about is features like preheating, and uh, so we're big fans of that. I know other people on the phone here are too, but I think it's important to think about um, while you're plugged in heating the cabin so that when a driver leaves in that truck, they've got a comfortable cabin already, and then they're using less of their battery range to heat that cabin. So I think everybody, obviously there's some interest in, in uh, heated seats and things like that to again, offset some of the need for cabin heat. So, but I, I'd put some specific numbers in the, in the very cold weather we see uh, and we plan on needing up to 20% more battery capacity in order to support that. So it's a, it's not an insignificant number. Um, and, and in warm weather, it's less, as Kurt said, we see, you might see a 10% difference in very hot weather in terms of additional battery capacity needed to run the same range and same payload. Thank you. Uh, yes, go yeah, ahead. To add go to ahead. that also, uh, we also have deployments in cold weather climates such as Michigan, uh, in New York and Illinois, uh, we're working with uh, BMW on recommended heating systems. And like Tim and Kurt mentioned, uh, yes, it does uh, eat up uh, some of the battery capacity, but this is a uh, known uh, challenge. Um, a lot of uh, folks who also drive EVs in the Nordics, for instance, uh, face this issue as well. Um, so it, 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 is, it is a challenge. Okay, thanks. Any uh, comment from you, um, BYD? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll jump in. I, they've all said most of it already, but yeah, we haven't experienced really any decrease in range because of the weather per se. It's the because of the the thermal management system, the batteries generate their own heat. Um, it's really the heating, and and uh, it's the amount of heating that you have to do that makes a difference. And I think in you know most of the truck cabs, we only see maybe five percent difference, uh, maybe up to ten percent difference. It just depends. Uh, we do a lot of our testing of vehicles, actually, even for not just uh, looking at the battery light, you know, uh, range, but for um, traction control systems and all sorts of things like that up in uh, both Canada and in uh, northwestern Michigan. And, you know, the trucks have performed really, really well. Great. Thank you. I think that's the, uh, we got through almost all of them. 
uh, but I appreciate your your responses, and I think this has been a good supplement to the pre the great presentation that you did. So I'm going to turn it back to my colleague in Albany, Jacob. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, so I want to thank all the presenters once again um, for your presentations. We appreciate your time and the information. Um, so up next, uh, we have our uh, third session of the day on refuse utility uh, and off-road trucks um, at one o'clock. Um, so as, uh, as was with the last uh, kind of transfer, uh, the webinar link will stay the same. Uh, we're gonna be live here for the next uh, three or four minutes until we start off again at one, uh, but just wanna give everybody uh, a break to go grab a cup of coffee, uh, maybe check some emails. Um, and hope to see you all back here in a few minutes. Uh, so thank you all for attending and, and thanks again presenters.